right. Good evening. I'll now call the uh, June 3rd, 2019 Board of Commissioners meeting into order. This evening, uh, we have the Reverend Kimberly Faraby of St. Mark Church of Christ's Disciples here to offer our invocation and pledge. Please come up and wait just not if you would. Thank you. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you on tonight. And we ask God that you will give us guidance and wisdom and support as we go forth. God, we pray that you will give, help us to make the right decisions for our community and Father, our fellow citizens. And God, we bless you on tonight. We thank you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes this evening? Mr. Chairman, I do have uh, some changes I'd like to um, uh, ask for under uh, the new business. I'd like to add a bid award for uh, SCBA's self-contained breathing apparatus uh, to um, fire protective equipment. And then uh, I would also like to move that we uh, ask that the manager provide his comments following the commissioner's reports. Okay, so I'll make the uh, fire bid uh, item A and the consent agenda item B. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all. Uh, public comment. I have no one signed up for public comment this evening. Is there anyone who would like to speak to public comment this evening? Right. Seeing none. Thank you. I'll close public comment. Commissioner's report. I don't have anything to talk about this evening. How about you, sir? Mr. Payment? Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Etheridge. I'd just like to say that our thoughts and prayers are with all the people in Virginia Beach who are going through a really hard time now and that we are thinking of them and praying for the people who are still in the hospital, a speedy recovery. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Commissioner Beaumont? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner McCord? I'd like to second what Commissioner Etheridge said about the, uh, the Virginia Beach situation. Um, it's a sad world we live in some days when people do this. Um, that being said, you know, one thing that we, this board's done too, which I think is good, we've beefed up our courtroom security um, at our courthouse. Um, you know, you never know. I mean, like I said, it's unfortunate. And prayers to the families and everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Etheridge. <clears throat> My comments follow those, um, but I did ask uh, ben this afternoon or this morning when I talked with him about any plans Curry Tuck County has in our various office buildings and whatnot in the event something like that would occur. So he said he could speak to that. Second thing I have is um, been getting citizens that are uh, telling me that the ATVs on the mainland are riding up and down farmers' paths, they're doing crop destruction, they're messing with people's equipment, uh, trespassing, ignoring trespassing signs. And I talked to the county attorney last week, is the possibility of maybe registering ATVs on the mainland something that could be looked at? I'm not saying that that is what we should be doing now, but um, I was talking to two people last week, and in one instance, they started up a piece, a large excavator to pull out a vehicle and left it running. They don't know how long it was running all night. And then uh, undid a GPS monitor and another one and just left it hanging. And that was a $15,000 piece of equipment. Mm. And uh, uh, I just hope people will be respectful of private property, pay attention to no trespassing signs, and I think I'm right, uh, Mr. Attorney, that if somebody gets hurt on your property, even though you've got signs and everything up, they could theoretically sue you 
for that type of injury. It, it might be a possibility. Um, now, to, no trespassing signs go a long way to providing a, a good defense well, to that. Some but, mitigation. But if, but if you have some, some dangerous um, depends on uh, fact of nuisance or hazardous uh, if you matters hazardous on your situation. property, you, you might find yourself in some difficulty. Mm -hmm. So I hope people will pay attention. Uh, we don't want to go to where we have to register these things, but if people ignore it and abuse the privilege of riding them, then that might be something we have to look at in the future. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jarvis. I have nothing tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Steichleth for the manager's report. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is a recommendation from our airport manager um, who started a couple weeks ago. He's done a pretty extensive <coughs> examination of um, fuel prices that we charge at the airport. <clears throat> we currently charge $3.50 per gallon for jet fuel and $4.25 per gallon for um, aviation gas. Um, after he did a, a search within 50, a 50 mile radius of our airport, um, he found that the average price for jet fuel is $4.56. He'd like to take our price to $4.07, and he's going to make that change. Um, one of the issues is we were selling jet fuel um, at or below the contract price, so if you're a bulk purchaser of fuel from Shell Aviation. And then on the Avgas, um, he did the same thing. The average fuel price within a 50-mile radius was $5.10. He's recommending that we take it to uh, four dollars and sixty-two cents from five or from four dollars and twenty-five cents. So, on a typical um, fill-up for Avgas, which is thirty-five gallons, it'll cost the the um, pilot about twelve dollars and ninety-five cents. So, um, it does a couple of things. It keeps us we're still very competitive in the market, and it keeps us um, helps us cover the cost of credit card fees and and other fees associated with. Um, taking credit cards and some of the costs for just actually pumping the gas. So, um, uh, can't can't you can't you um, account for the credit card fees now? Yes, there is a way to do that. Um, you can you can do it and go through a separate credit card entity. I don't know how that would work with our fuel farm because it. It's a different. It runs through you, the system. If you self help, you're swiping your own credit card. There's a so there's a company called Blue Pay and Jet Pay, and they they would install a terminal and they <coughs> charge back the customer the percentage rate of their card. Mm -hmm. So some cards are at three percent, two percent. And if you have to reward cards, work. you pay for that too. Right. So it charges back to them. We actually <coughs> utilize that in my business. Um, in either case, I think that the the price increase is justified just because we're still we're going to be extremely competitive even at the price of um, four dollars and sixty two cents. Um, It'll still we'll still be the cheapest fuel stop within a fifty mile uh, radius, um, and we're under the average fuel price bottom is fifty cents. So we're still we're still a heck of a deal on on lav gas. So um, to speak to Commissioner Etheridge's question about the active shooter training, over the last couple of years we've done um, in conjunction with a partnership with the sheriff's office a study of all of our buildings to look at the safety um, standards that they have not just for active shooter purposes, but fire purposes, um, a whole host of things. They came up with a list of recommendations. We've been working our way through those recommendations to make our buildings a more secure, safer place to work. Um, as far as specific active shooter training, that's something I'm going to talk to the sheriff's office about, seeing if they can put together um, some kind of training that we could roll out to the employees. We've, I've been through training, um, run, hide, fight training. There's some other really good kind of standardized programs across the country. That, uh, that help with that. Well, I know the fire departments and the sheriff's department actively do that now with the school system. <laughs> they do. And, and what I'm talking um, so there are scenarios that the school system runs where they actually kind of kind of see how that would operate in real life. This What I'm talking about is specific training with the employee, not so much a scenario at a county building. But I think that it's, I think there's a, an ability to partner there that um, could be very beneficial. That's, that's something he would, I mean, he definitely would yeah. be a part of. Um, the if folks look at some of our advertising moving forward for our tourism, they're going to see a, a slight change. We're going to start to focus more on the uh, the Kerala name instead of Currituck Outer Banks. That's a direct 
result one of the Chandler Thinks presentation where they talked about how Corolla is the name that people associate with the beach here whenever they're looking to book a vacation. But also it was a recommendation that came out of our um, tourism advisory board. So um, we've got a couple of print ads that will start to, to feature that more prominently in the next little bit. And finally, the um, we currently have a, a position of developer of the development tech and are soon getting ready to have a position open in Corolla for planner. Those are both positions in Corolla. Um, as of June 21st, they'll both be open. So if we can't fill one of those two positions by then, it is my intention to keep staff here and folks would have to come over here for that kind of work. We will still have permitting available at the Corolla office, but until we can, until we can fill those two positions, um, We've got so much work here because of development on the mainland that if we take somebody from over here and put them over there, it puts us in a real bind. So hopefully we'll be able to fill that before the 21st, um, but just wanted to make everybody aware of, of that situation. Um, the only other thing is we've got a branding initiative going forward that's trying to develop a countywide brand as well as a mainland brand. Um, there's some surveys that were sent out, so if you take a look at your email, um, our tourism director sent you all emails um, with a survey so that you can fill out and get back. Um, it would be greatly appreciated. And that's all I have, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is administrative reports. Uh, a, presentation of the College of the Alamar Board of Trustees. Uh, enrollment for the Kirtuck County Regional Aviation Technical Training Center. And we have Mr. Paul O'Neill here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I um, want to take a few minutes to first thank you for allowing us to come and share what we think is a, a good story with the citizens of Curry Tuck County. Um, I have a, I think it's a, about a 45 slide presentation I'd like to share with you. Just kidding. <laughs> um, it's just a, a few slides, but before we get to that, I know at, uh, I believe it was the last meeting or meeting before, Ms. Etheridge had asked a question about COA's budget, and I uh, brought to uh, the clerk a copy of the county revenues budgets for COA. It has the main campus, the Dare campus, <coughs> the Chowan campus, and the Curry Tuck campus. So it shows what the budget is, what's been spent year to date, and what's left. And that information is certainly available at, at any time. Also, there's another handout I have for you to show the enrollment growth at COA. For 19, for, uh, for the years 19 and 20, COA is expecting a 7.5% growth in enrollment. If you look at that sheet, you'll see that just about every community college in North Carolina out of 58 is expecting a decrease. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of 58 that are having an enrollment increase and College of the Albemarle is one of them. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in just a second, but that's something that uh, there's only one other community college that had a higher growth of enrollment and that was Rowan and, and they were 8.6 and we were 7.5. So just a little uh, information for you. Tonight I have Miss Michelle Waters, she is the dean out at the campus, out at the airport, and she is here to make sure I don't mess up <laughs> and to answer any questions, uh, specific questions you may have about the facility and what's going on out at the uh, Curry Tuck campus. So she's very valuable to COA and to Curry Tuck County, and we're happy to have you here tonight. Would you like to say anything, or are you just going to? No, thank you for having us. and. Um Letting Mr. O'Neill give the overview, and I'll be happy to answer any questions to the best of my ability or get you the answers if I don't know them. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to uh, go a little history of College of the Albemarle and how it got started. Following the end of World War II in 1945, the seven Albemarle coastal counties faced uh, economic challenges as a surge of veterans returned home. Uh, population and demand for jobs continued to grow 
And the four largest uh, industries in the area, agriculture, fishing, lumber, and tourism, they were seasonal. So such pressures created demand for a facility to teach residents skills needed to succeed in a changing world. COA opened its doors in 1961 with 113 students. The Regional and Aviation Technical Center opens in August of 2013. So that was the first facility and the, and the last facility. So as we look in the future for Currituck County, Currituck County is slated to start a new public safety center in the fall of 2019. I believe it's somewhere in a neighborhood of a $20 million project for Currituck County's capital improvement plan. Currituck was successful in getting a million dollars allocated from the state bond funds that were approved through the legislature. But since Currituck owns the building and leases it to COA, we were not eligible for the money, so we had to get a uh, bill sponsored and passed in the legislature to allow Currituck to access what I consider their proportional share of the funds of the bond money. So we were successful with that. And um, I believe uh, Representative Hannig and Senator Steinberg just got the same thing done for Dare County. They were not successful. So proposed programs that will be offered at the public safety building include the COA portion will be emergency medical science, certified nursing aid, basic law enforcement training to include BLET and advanced law enforcement courses, fire training courses, and of course there's going to be a multi-purpose room and a variety of general education courses in addition to what's already offered there. Currently, you have aviation systems technology, computer-aided drafting, computer-integrated machining, and the following associate degrees can be completed through a mixture of online, hybrid, and traditional classes. You can get an associate's in arts and associate in sciences. And I can tell you that I know some of the uh, young folks that have completed some of these courses right here in Curry Talk and got their certificates and their degrees, and they're, they're doing pretty well. Um, I know that uh, for a long time it's all been let's get kids in a four-year college, but I think the pendulum is swinging some that we need to teach skills for the kids that aren't ready to go off to college for four years. So COA is integral in providing some of those job skills that people need. Um, we have a general education transfer agreement, an associate's degree of degree available at COA is guaranteed to transfer to any of the UNC uh, system universities and the associates in art and in science. Doesn't guarantee you can get into it, but the, the degree will transfer <coughs> and you can see the different uh, schools. East, uh, East Carolina and Elizabeth City State also have partnerships with uh, COA to allow students to simultaneously while committing to maintain full-time status upon completion of an associate's degree students can seam seamlessly transition into degree completion programs at either university. Some of the student benefits that are included with that are Office of Student Activities, Joint Financial Aid Counseling, Micro Scholarship Opportunities, and Waiver of Transfer Application Fees. So let's talk about COA and Curry Tuck County school system. <clears throat> Currently at COA, we have 634 county residents enrolled in curriculum courses during the 1819 year. Of those residents, 299, 47% were Curry Tuck County high school students participating in the dual enrollment, enrollment program for a cost savings of tuition and fees for Curry Tuck County taxpayers of $379,532 during that, that year. I have a daughter that uh, through dual enrollment in Curry Tuck schools was able to complete a semester at, at COA and it saved us a semester on her college and now she's enrolled at East Carolina for her last two years and um, saves a lot of money as you will see on the next slide. We're going to look at cost savings for a two-year undergraduate degree. COA, the cost per credit hour $76, tuition and fees $44.54, room and board zero, books and supplies $2,074 for a total cost of $6,528. 
Then you look at ECU, NC State, UNCW, and Appalachian State. So at East Carolina, you're looking for the same two years, 37,900, um, $37,948. Mm -hmm. At North Carolina State, the, the numbers are... <laughs> yeah. North Carolina State, $42,436. And you can see it's quite a cost difference for uh, parents and students uh, by enrolling in COA and getting your two-year associate's degree before you go off to East Carolina or NC State. We didn't put Carolina on there because we just didn't put Carolina <laughs> on there. <laughs> Um, and then you can see on the next slide, you can take away the cost of um, room and board. We have the next slide. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, and without room and board, you can see the difference, but it's still a bargain to go to COA to get your two year associate's degree and then transfer in to the four year college of your choice. I'm not really sure that all the parents and students in Currituck or Dare or Pasquotank really have grasped how much money you can save by going to two years in a local community college and, and getting your associate's degree. And then when you graduate at the end of your fourth year, your degree still says East Carolina or North Carolina State or Carolina Ike or wherever you may go. <laughs> so we look at student loans. Uh, two years at COA plus two years at ECU. So you have two years at COA is $6,500 and two years at ECU $30,000, which comes out to $37,000 with a monthly uh, student loan payment of $413 versus if you went four straight years at ECU, it would cost you $68,000, 648, $68,648 with a monthly student loan payment of $762. That's a big deal. In North Carolina, we're ranked number 10 in student, student loan debt. And it continues to grow. It was up 3.5% uh, from the previous year, and 58% of graduates had debt. And we keep hearing a lot of talk about student debt, student debt. Here's one good way to curb some of the stu student debt. So also, the COA Foundation has scholarships, and they're available in different areas of study based on financial need, location of residency, and merit. And um, they're also available for students transferring from COA to a four-year college or university. So you can see we've got a jewel right here in our backyard, and it's really important the, the uh, support that the county has given COA, unlike the university system, the community colleges, um, the bricks and mortar and operational expenses aren't paid by the state. They're paid by the local governments where the colleges are located. So you guys and the taxpayers in Currituck have been really generous to COA and to the young students here in Currituck County supporting the uh, facilities we have here, and we thank you for it. The state does provide instructional uh, monies, but the bricks and mortar and operations are funded locally. We're not like the university system. So we think it's important that you know what's going on here locally and that uh, if you have questions, we want to answer any questions that you have. I um, also think it's appropriate that over the years, of, I know Mr. Scanlon, he doesn't want anybody to pat him on the back, but over the years, uh, he's been very instrumental in, in supporting COA and helping to find the funding and, and getting it going along with the commissioners. And I know his time is short. He's a short timer. And he's, he's smiling a lot more than he used to. But um, I couldn't come and do a presentation without recognizing his, his contributions along with the current board of commissioners and previous commissioners. And, and we really appreciate it. And if we have any questions, uh, Michelle is here, and she'll be glad to answer. <laughs> I'll take the easy ones, and she'll take the difficult ones. I was just wondering, do they have a local GED program here in the county? We do offer GED services. Uh, one up to the mic. Come on up. Um, the College of the Albemarle does offer a wide variety of um, 
high school equivalency um, options. Most of those, however, are offered at our Elizabeth City campus, and we do have some online adult high school programs as well that students from any county can access. But on our Curry Tuck campus, we do not currently offer any high school equivalency. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a question. How many students are out at the Curry Tuck campus now? <coughs> Um, I believe uh, Mr. O'Neill gave the 2000, was it the 18? Yes. Um, in terms of, um, I have the 2017-18 data was the last one that I was given from our office. We had 314 students at our Curry Tuck campus that year, and that was up from 2016-17 of 263 students. So every year that we've been open, we have seen a steady increase of enrollment at that particular campus. Do you, do you have a breakdown of where those students are coming from countywide? I do. Would you like it? Please. Okay. From Camden, we had 70 students. From Chowan, 6. From Currituck, 197, or 63%, which is the largest. Dare, we had 7 students, or 2%. Gates County, 1 student. Pasquotank 22 and Perquimans 6 and those would um, and then we also had um, two students from other North Carolina counties and three from out of state so that would give you your total of 314 for 2017-18. So it's definitely benefiting Curry Tuck County students yes, as sir. well as other counties. Thank sir. you. Thank you. And can you clarify that's for both students at the traditional Curry Tuck High School as well as the early college correct? Yes. That is total enrollment at that campus. And I don't have a breakdown of dual enrollment versus adult with me. And I will make a comment on the trades program. I know, Paul, you'd said that the, I think COA is working on getting that HVAC is one of the trades back to the Liberty City campus. But there was, a, there was a young man I spoke with who's a junior in Currituck High School right now. He's going to be senior next year. He, uh, he's in, a, uh, I guess, a CT program. For HVAC, and he he took the courses, and he drove all the way to Manio to take the course right now, which I commended him for that. But he went ahead, and he was able to get a certificate, got that done, got his EPA or took his EPA refrigeration testing from campus. He's going to be taking the the full course this spring at COA um, for finish up the HVAC. He's going to intern with me this summer, which is fantastic. The young man's excited. Um, but he had nothing but praise for the school he went to. He just wished it was closer. I told him we're working on that piece of it there. So, but um, anyways, I, I just appreciate, you know, we're working on getting the trades programs too focused, and I think that's going to be a big part of our economy coming forward. One comment on that. As you know, we're in the process of searching for a new president, as Dr. Weininger has announced his resignation at the end of the month, and we held public forums in all of the uh, locations where we have campuses and that was one of the things that was discussed was where we place certain programs are they in the right places and that's some of the things that we're going to be looking at uh, to make sure we have the right program and the right facility to kind of mirror the economy of that particular location so uh, we are moving some things now but is kind of at a standstill until we uh, hire a new president, which we hope to have by early November. Anything else for <laughs> Mr. O'Neill? Thank you both for coming up here. And Paul, uh, thank you for your continued service to citizens of Currituck County. All right, next item on the agenda, public hearings. PB 19-09, Bruce Weaver from Kitty Hawk Kites is here to present a text amendment. And the request is to amend the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 4, Houston Standards, and Chapter 10, Definitions and Measurements, to establish outdoor tour operators aviation as a use allowed in the Ag Zoning District subject to a use permit and specific conditions. And with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Liz Cicero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the text amendment before you tonight uh, attempts to create, I mean, to correct an issue where a specific use got lumped into a general use and that general use was disallowed. Um, under our previous UDO, which is prior to 2013, 
we allowed outdoor recreation in the ag zoning district uh, with a use permit. So um, when the new UDO was enacted, it removed um, outdoor uses, or sorry, outdoor recreation, uh, it removed it as a permitted use, even with a use permit, from our permitted use table in the AG and the Ag Zoning District. Um, outdoor recreation, it includes, and, and the reason I think it was excluded, it was removed, was because it included um, some very intense recreation and amusement uses that may um, create conflict with the residential uses that are so prevalent in our AG zoning. It includes things such as arenas, amphitheaters, stadium, go-kart racing, water parks, amusement parks, and paintball, and so such things like that. This uh, public, I'm sorry, this text amendment attempts to specify um, outdoor recreation, aviation. So, the, the proposed change before you tonight is to amend the use table to allow outdoor tour operators aviation in the AG zoning districts still with the use permit. So if they wanted, if anyone wanted to start this um, endeavor or amend their existing use permit, they would still have to come before the board for that approval. Um, and, and in that, the aviation uh, outdoor tour operators would meet the following special requirements. Um, that's also included in this language. Um, it would comply with the applicable standards in any of the Code of Ordinances, comply with FAA regulations, uh, limit flights below uh, 500 feet in altitude over residential zoning districts or existing residential uses. Um, a use permit may set hours of operation. When people would come before, you could set hours, and that includes um, the time frame, time of the year, not just hours, but time of the year. Uh, the outdoor tour operator would have to provide public restrooms and adequate parking. These are very specific. Um, when located in the AG, it, they must be located at least 500 feet from residential zoning district, have direct access onto a major arterial, and be located on at least two acres of property and have a minimal physical alteration to the area where it is the use is performed. Currently, um, outdoor tour operators, I mean, sorry, outdoor uh, recreation is only allowed in the GB, uh, the general business, and limited business, LB zoning districts. So um, this proposed change, and we also would add this uh, definition to the, uh, to the, to Chapter 10 of the UDO, and to clarify outdoor tour operators uh, as a company or individual that arranges aerial tours and instruction, including hang gliding, paragliding, powered paragliding, powered parachutes, trikes, light sport aircraft, ultra lights, and general aviation aircraft. The aircraft may be powered or non-powered. Flights may be guided or independent. So this text amendment, um, the applicant, Bruce Weaver, can speak to more detail about this, but this text amendment would essentially allow this type of operation in our AG and our ag zoning district with a use permit. Like I said, prior to 2013, um, we didn't specify uh, down to this detail of aviation, but we did allow outdoor recreation in ag with a use permit, but with the new UDO in 2013, it eliminated that as a permitted use. So see, there's, uh, these are some of the things that would be going on with um, allowing outdoor um, allowing aviation tour operators in AAG. <laughs> um, so the uh, staff does recommend approval and planning board uh, followed that. Uh, they voted to approve this as well, um, this text amendment. And these are some of the goals uh, and policies that, are, that we find that is consistent with the 2006 land use plan that they um, this will help protect agriculture and other resource-based activities. It helps to support new and expanding businesses. Um, and in addition to recruitment and expansion of major new industries, um, it helps uh, small business startups, expansions, and spinoffs. Um, so in, the, in, in your agenda packet, you have uh, the underlined and the highlighted text, specifically the highlighted text is staff's added recommended language, um, and the underlined text is Mr. Weaver's original um, proposal for text amendment changes. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions about, about this text amendment. Um, just, I have a couple, and maybe it would be better for the applicant at some point, but uh, 
Well, there's a, I saw that you had to be on at least two acres. Um, what about a runway? Is a runway would encompass more than two acres? I'm assuming, no. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just, the length of the runway versus two acres. Oh, you're saying set the size? Right, because it's saying that it must be um, on a minimum of at least two acres, a, a lot, being located in a lot of at least two acres in area. Um, I'm just asking, it seems like a small area to land and take off and... These things get flying if the wind blows too hard. <coughs> okay. Well, that was it for me. Any other questions for Ms. LaCicero? More? Okay. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll bring the applicant up here. Um, Mr. Weaver, if you want to talk about your project or your suggestions. Uh, Kitty Alkites, I've uh, been working with John Harris and the hang gliding school here since 1987. Uh, we started our operation uh, over uh, behind the cotton gin here in 2012 and uh, have been working uh, over there with our tandem operation, our tandem hang gliding operation. Uh, I'd like to, before I get too far into it, I'd like to just recognize the crew that works out there on a daily basis. Uh, arguably the most accomplished crew that is in the country. This is John Thompson right here. He's the fellow that flies the aircraft. Uh, Mike Pattishaw and Andy Thompson, they fly the tandems. If any of you have been out there to uh, witness it, those are, the, uh, those are the guys that have been taking people up into the air. They've done thousands of operations out there and have uh, certainly uh, done a great job and certainly opened the eyes of many people to aviation uh, in a glorious way there above Currituck County. So uh, as far as the uh, text amendment goes, it originally uh, started because we had some of these uh, some of these other wings like the paraglider that we wanted to get up you had asked about the size of the area this isn't necessarily just for the things that that we would plan on doing we uh, we had wanted to do some paragliding which is actually a part of hang gliding it's a subset of hang gliding um, but since it wasn't originally put in the language of our special use permit we wanted to come and get uh, permission to do that and that type of flying doesn't need much of a runway uh, you know, these very little space for that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so that got the ball rolling uh, and got us to where we are today, uh, trying to get it cleared up after we had, uh, after the UEDO had been changed and uh, just get it cleaned up so we can get uh, more people up in the air. And that's really what we're interested in doing. What, um, will you guys, are you going to try and offer the full complement of the things that, like we've shown here tonight, the, we don't intend to offer everything that's available. What I tried to do is just, you know, the, the text amendment is for uh, tour operator, aviation, that may be, you know, anything. But that's not, uh, we don't necessarily intend to uh, offer everything there at the location we're in. And the reason I ask that is when you make a text amendment, it affects everything countywide. So right. it's maybe not you, but the next guy, that's the level of intensity because it's an ag zone. Um, I'm just thinking about the noise of multiple. I don't, you know, I don't know enough about it, so I'm sure you do and you do, but you don't. It's like a weed eater. <laughs> All right, good enough for me. In a respectful, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything further? I, I mean, the reality is compared to normal aircraft it it's the fraction of Fair. the sound okay Fair enough. <clears throat> i know that when it was initially approved in 2011 that was a concern but i don't think there's ever been any complaints since then about noise okay and this just to clarify this is a text amendment mm -hmm. and so if there's a new um person wanting to do this type of business or who mr reaver wants to amend his use permit they would still have to come before the board right. for the use permit. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Weaver. Um, next, I'll open uh, public comment if there's nothing further from the board for the applicant. Okay. And uh, I have uh, 
Mr. Harris, Mr. John Harris, did you would you like to come up and speak this evening? If you would, sir, just please state your name and address for the record. John Harris, uh, Nags Head, North Carolina, <coughs> and uh, work with Kitty Hawk Kites and. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we've been teaching uh, hang gliding in Currituck since 19, well, 1991 and even before that. Uh, so we have a long operating history in uh, Currituck County. Uh, we taught at the airport for many, many years uh, until uh, we worked the airstrip out at the Cotton Gin and we worked out the uh, conditional use permit with planning board and with the commissioners many years ago. Uh, so in, in 2011 we did that and we've been operating at Cotton Gin since 2012 and so also operating some at, continuing to operate some at Currituck County Airport. Um, so we have a, a long operating history. We've been able to bring people back across the bridge, visitors across the bridge uh, for a long period of time now. Um, and uh, we feel that that's good for all of Currituck County and we're, we're glad that we're able to do that. The experience is so wonderful that uh, people come back for it. Uh, they send their friends to do it. Um, and these, these guys, as Bruce said, do an incredible job. Uh, so we would like your help in, in uh, passing this uh, Tex amendments so that we can continue operating as as we have been for years in Currituck County. Okay. Thank you Thank for you, your consideration. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Mr. Weaver, you'd signed up for public comment. Are you did you want to speak again or are you okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. Would anyone else like to speak on this matter? Seeing no one, I will close the uh, public comment. And uh, is there any comments from the board discussion? I'll open the floor for a motion. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman, I'm... Oh. Who wants it? After okay. you. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Well, then, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to make a motion um, to move to approve PB 1909 because this request is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the 2006 land use plan, including policy AG4, <laughs> county's growth management tools, including particular zoning, should provide protection to agriculture and other resource-based activities from <clears throat> incompatible land uses, such as residential subdivision in the midst of general uninterrupted farmland policy ED1. New and expanding industries and businesses should be especially encouraged that diverse, <clears throat> diversified local economy, train and utilize a more highly skilled labor force, and are compatible with the environmental quality and natural amenity-based economy of Curtis County. Policy 84, in addition to the recruitment and expansion of major new industries, the considerable value of a small business startup's expansion spinoff shall also be recognized. And the request is reasonable and in the public interest because it may preserve farm culture and promote farm and open space conservation through diversifying low impact uses of agricultural land. And it provides for economic diversity and local economic development. Thank you, sir. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, it carries unanimously. Thank you, guys. Next, action, next item, B, public hearing and possible action on annual budget for the fiscal year ending in June 30th, 2020. For that, Mr. Steichleather. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you're aware, we had the budget presentation at the last meeting. This is for public comment for the budget. I will just touch on a couple of things that have changed since the last presentation. Um, in the general fund, there we've had a we're going to restructure engineering and take it out from over top of some of our other functions. Um, one byproduct of that is that our soil and stormwater technician is now going to be reclassified as a so soil and stormwater manager, and that increased the total budget by a cost of five thousand and eighteen dollars. That's the the most significant change to the current budget. So other than that, the budget is as it was presented to to the board. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, um, I will open public comment for the budget. There is no one signed up this evening. Would anyone like to comment on the budget this evening? Okay, seeing no one, I will close public comment. 
Any further discussion from the board on the issue? No? Okay. I'll open the floor for a motion to approve the budget for this year. Are we, we're ready to approve, right? You ready? You ready, Paul? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the budget for uh, next year. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second with Mr. McCord. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? No. Nay. All right, motion carries. Next item on the agenda is new business. A, <clears throat> fire protection um, bid award for self-contained breathing apparatus to the fire for fire to fire protection equipment company. Mr. Stackler. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, request from Fire and EMS. They have gone through a process where they were awarded a FEMA grant. They've gone out for bid for self-contained breathing apparatus. Um, it's basically the air packs that firefighters wear whenever they're fighting a fire. Through that process, they were awarded a total grant of $1,094,500. Of that, it's a reimbursement grant. $995,000 will come back to the county from FEMA. When they went out for bid, they had three bidders come in. The low bidder was found to not meet the specifications that were in the bid package and so was declared um, to not be a responsible bidder. They have gone with the next highest bid, which is a company fire protection equipment. They came in with a bid of $1,189,405.95. However, what we are requesting tonight is that the board approve an award to fire protection equipment in an amount of $1,094,500. This will allow us to spend up to the grant amount. The way that we're going to make a reduction in cost is we're going to cut the number of units that we're going to purchase from the company. If at some point we wanted to move forward with, um, with purchasing more units, the contract, the bid is valid um, for some time in the foreseeable future. The other thing that I do want to mention is part of this bid package was some alternates that could be added on to the air packs. Those alternates can be added at a later date if we so choose. Um, those are an air monitoring system that you could put on. That could either be funded um, in a future budget or if the volunteer fire departments would like to add those if they have fund balance in their own account or if they wanted to do some kind of fundraiser, that could be done as well. So. Can I ask one question? Isn't there some kind of program, whatever, on some of the stuff that they had can be, like, I guess, returned or upgraded or whatever? Is that? Not not to these specs. Not to those. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing that is worth mentioning, part of this bid is to allow our not Island firefighters to become certified in servicing these units so we will no longer have to outsource the servicing of the um, air, air packs to other companies, then there will be approximately a $12,000 a year cost savings to the fire departments doing that in-house. The other, the other, I guess, question is the, um, some of the departments have newer um, packs, but they'll be able to sell them or sell them back and, and get some, and we can use that towards the purchases or the departments keep that and use them for their personal upgrades and if they the, want those. The intent is that the departments keep the funds that are generated okay, from. so they can use them for upgrades and if they correct. want to. Okay, well, that, yeah, that, that should help out right there then with the upgrade portion. The, um, the, some of the features that the new systems will have is the ability to remotely monitor all firefighters in their air uh, levels. So there will be alarms, and they're kind of obnoxious when you start running low to make sure we don't have firefighters run out of air inside a structure. Okay, yep, absolutely. And th that functionality is something that will have to be added on, but like um, Commissioner Payment alluded to, there are funds that could be available to volunteer fire departments through the sale of newer units to do that. Um, once again, the... Like I said, the bulk of this purchase will be covered through a FEMA reimbursement grant, so almost a million dollars. In one other comment, the purpose of this grant was to standardize equipment throughout the county. So that's, that was the whole basis of applying for this grant, and I think Deputy Chief Riley was very instrumental in the writing of the grant and, and getting the awards. So now it will not matter where in the county you are, your SCBA will be interchangeable, your mask will work 
no matter where you are. So it's it's part of that drive to try and standardize operations throughout the county. So we have mutual aid. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Right. Do you have a comment, sir? Okay. Any more discussion from the board on this? I'll open the floor for a motion. I move to approve the uh, the sale or the purchase of the SCBAs. I'll second it. Let's do it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, it carries unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is a consent agenda. Any discussion on this consent agenda this evening? Commissioners? All right, thank you. Do we have second. a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we got the county manager report. And uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners? We make a motion that we adjourn the regular meeting of the Commissioners. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is a special meeting of the Tourism Development Authority. <clears throat> Tours and, and the agenda on there is the Tourism Development Authority public hearing and possible action on an annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th of 2020. Wait, is, is Tamara here tonight or is this I, I, it's just me okay so hopefully that'll be all right with everybody that'll be just fine sir all right thank you um this budget did have a substantial change from when it was presented we went out to bid between our last meeting and this meeting for um our historic boat museum which is going to be at the um, historic wellhead park the um the exhibits for that building are going to cost roughly six hundred thousand dollars the actual bid to construct the building came in over what we had it budgeted at so i have included a increase from the tourism related section of the occupancy tax fund balance in the amount of one million three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to cover the difference now one thing i do want to make clear we are as we move forward going to look to see if there are ways that we can value engineer some of the costs down having said that I'd rather come and ask for the full amount and then work my way down than come and give false hope that we can get it to some other number and not be able to get there. So that's why I've amended the budget um, to include that additional appropriation from fund balance. I'm comfortable with where that leaves the fund balance on the tourism-related expenditures. Once again, this does not come from the promotional side. This is only from tourism-related, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that, that you all may have. So this will include exhibits? It will. I believe we talked about yeah, we funding that and getting it right yeah. from the get-go. Yep. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steichleather. Any further discussion from the board? Then I will move to approve the uh, tourism's budget for year 2020. Um, oh. Mr. Chairman, I think we need to open a public oh, hearing. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Oh. Thank you. That is in here. Good job. Yes, sir. I will rescind that motion. Check. And balance. All right. <clears throat> I will open the public uh, hearing for this and uh, public comment. And would anybody like to talk out there about uh, boat museums and tourism development authority budgets? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public <laughs> comment section. <clears throat> and now I'll make a motion to approve the tourism budget for uh, fiscal year 2020. And I'll second that then. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it carries unanimously. And can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? So moved. I second. Mr. Beaumont seconds. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I will open a special meeting of the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer Districts. And the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District public hearing and possible action on the annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30th of 2020. Mr. Steichleather. Hey, Mr. Chairman, there were no substantial changes to this budget from the presentation. Any questions for him? Okay. At this time, I'll open the public hearing for that and public comment. Would anyone like to speak to the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District annual budget for 2020? I don't see anyone to do that. I will close the public comment, and I will make the motion to approve uh, their budget for 2020. Okay. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn that special meeting of the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
And that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you all.